About 4 billion years ago, a planet called Theia collided with the planet that would eventually become Earth. The collision was extremely violent and left a cloud of debris that eventually coalesced into two large objects, Earth and a close orbiting moon that slowly spiraled outward. The Theia collision has a ton of evidence supporting it, and while there's always going to be disagreement about what actually happened, it is currently our best explanation for how the moon formed. But unfortunately, because neither Theia or Proto-Earth exist anymore, we know extremely little about what these worlds were like. However, that doesn't mean we know nothing, and it doesn't mean there aren't things we can find out. Rocks on the moon having been sitting there with no erosion for billions of years are really good at record keeping. There are blobs of material in the lower mantle of Earth that could be remnants of Theia. Comparing Earth's composition to the rest of the inner solar system planets and seeing what differences there are could give us an idea as to what material Theia was made of. So, with all available data we have, what was Theia like? This video will go over several potential ideas for what Theia was like, and we'll talk about general characteristics like its mass before getting into more speculative things like where it formed in the solar system, and even what its environment was like. We'll also talk about what the Proto-Earth may have been like before the Theia collision happened. But before we get into it, obviously a lot of this video is going to be speculation with minimal data. As I said already, Theia no longer exists, and hasn't existed for billions of years. If it ever existed at all is still somewhat of a debated subject, though personally from the research I've seen, I think it's very likely that Theia was a real object that did collide with Proto-Earth. And there's also a reason I'm specifically calling the planet Theia collided with Proto-Earth instead of just Earth. This collision damaged Proto-Earth to the point where I don't consider modern Earth to be the same planet as Proto-Earth, any more than we would call the moon Theia. Earth is not the survivor of the collision, it's the planet that was born out of the debris along with the moon. But that's only my personal opinion, and if you consider modern Earth to be the same planet, just significantly altered as Proto-Earth, that's also fine. Me calling these objects two separate planets is based more on vibes than actual data. But to avoid confusion for this video, I'll be referring to Earth before the collision as Proto-Earth, and Earth after the collision as modern Earth. Anyways, the first question we have to answer is how big Theia was. Of course, most of you are probably immediately thinking Mars-sized. But one important thing to remember here is that we're talking about Mars size in terms of mass. Mars is only 10% the mass of Earth, despite being almost half its radius. So when people say Mars sized, what they mean is about 10% as massive as modern Earth. However, that size is not actually settled. Other studies have proposed that Theia's true mass may have been as much as 30% of modern Earth's, with one study going as high as 40%. Now notice here that I'm saying the mass of modern Earth. This is because, depending on how massive Theia was, we also have to consider the mass of Proto-Earth. The paper that proposes the 40% mass for Theia also gives Proto-Earth a mass of just 62% of modern Earth, less massive than Venus. In this scenario, the two planets collided and resulted in a planet of one Earth mass, Earth, and the moon formed out of the remaining 2% of the mass. So, there are possible scenarios where not only Theia is significantly larger than Mars, but Proto-Earth might be much smaller than modern Earth, and both Proto-Earth and Theia could have even be close to equal sizes. The paper that suggests this will be linked in the description. The differences in Theia's mass would also lead to differences in what material the moon is made of. In scenarios where Theia is smaller, it makes up a larger percentage of the moon's mass. This is because a larger Theia results in a more violent collision that is better at mixing material from both planets. So, Theia being Mars-sized, while a pretty good guess, is not actually confirmed, and there is the possibility that it was much bigger, as much as 30-40% to 40 the mass of Earth, though that's not confirmed either. Clearly we have a problem here. If we can't even reliably determine Theia's true mass, then how could we possibly go about finding out other things about it? Well, there are some things we might be able to determine even with uncertainties in Theia's true size. One of which is what the collision between Theia and Proto-Earth was actually like. It was originally thought that Theia hit Proto-Earth with a glancing blow, only barely grazing it, and the moon formed out of mostly Theian material. It was thought at the time that a head-on collision would have completely destroyed both planets, leaving behind an asteroid belt that would quickly disperse due to the gravitational effects of other planets. However, NASA simulations have suggested that a head-on collision is actually more likely, and doesn't result in the destruction of both objects, and is actually the more likely way the moon formed. However, this also does depend on Theia's mass, as a bigger Theia will alter the parameters of the collision. But no matter what, it does seem like a head-on collision is more likely than a glancing blow. And a Mars-sized Theia is capable of producing the Earth-Moon system we see today, so it's not completely ruled out. Another thing we can guess at is Theia's composition and where it formed in the solar system. 
Like the nature of the Thea collision, it was originally thought that Thea probably formed close to Earth, with some even suggesting that Thea formed in Proto-Earth's L4 or L5 Lagrange point, meaning at some point Proto-Earth and Thea shared the same orbit around the Sun, with Thea being a Trojan planet of Proto-Earth. However, more recent studies have also cast doubt on this, and even suggest that Thea may have formed in the outer solar system where the gas giants are. This comes from the composition of modern Earth. Based on how Earth looks today, it seems that whatever Earth's last giant impact was, it was either hit by a carbonaceous object, meaning an object with a lot of material with carbon in it, or a non-carbonaceous object that was impacted by its own carbonaceous object. We know that Earth's last giant impact was Thea, and there were no other planetary scale impacts after that, so it is important for the origin and composition of Thea. Carbonaceous material is usually found in the outer reaches of planetary systems, and planets that form out of it also usually have a lot of icy material. In the case of Thea, this could suggest that this planet was a carbonaceous object scattered into the inner solar system by the formation of the giant planets. In this scenario, planetary embryos that will eventually become the gas giants form about 5 to 10 AU away from the Sun, around where Jupiter and Saturn are today, and they form rapidly. This quick formation causes carbonaceous material, as much as 0.3 Earth masses of it, to be scattered toward the inner solar system in the form of planetary embryos. If this is true, then Thea could have been one such object. Which means that instead of being hit by a rocky planet that formed nearby, Proto-Earth could have gotten hit by an outer solar system planet that was thrown inwards by the instability of the gas giants. This scenario actually explains more than just the composition of Earth as well. Carbonaceous material being scattered into the inner solar system by the gas giants not only lines up with the estimated time period of the formation of the moon, but also lines up with when we expect giant planet instability to have occurred once the sun protoplanetary disk dissipated. It can also explain the mass ratio between Earth and Mars and the orbital distribution of asteroids. But Thea being a carbonaceous object isn't the only explanation. It's also possible that Thea was a non-carbonaceous object that was hit by its own carbonaceous object. Ironically, if this is true, Thea experienced its own giant impact before going on to impact Proto-Earth. Though do keep in mind that none of this is confirmed yet, and while there does seem to be a good amount of evidence in its favor, there are still many other plausible scenarios. So we've gone over Thea's size, with it ranging from around the mass of Mars to maybe even close to half the mass of modern Earth. We've gone over its potential formation history and composition, with Thea being an outer solar system object scattered inward being a decently plausible scenario, though not the only one, before experiencing a head-on collision with Proto-Earth. But what was Thea's environment like? If you could stand on Thea before the collision that destroyed it happened, what would it be like? Well, answering that might be simpler than you think. Obviously, we have no idea what Thea's exact environment was like. There's no real way to find actual evidence of it either, because Thea's environment would not significantly alter its collision with Earth. It's probably going to have some sort of magma ocean after cooling off from its formation, but I'm not satisfied with just labeling it as a lava planet and calling it a day. Just based on the exoplanets we know of, the category of lava planet has a lot of diversity. There's a large difference between the exoplanet Janssen, an 8 Earth mass planet with a global lava ocean and thick atmosphere of carbon monoxide and dioxide, and K2141b, a 5 Earth mass planet with a potential thin atmosphere of vaporized metals, and Tahe, a small sub-Earth that's completely airless with temperatures in the thousands of degrees. Also, Thea might not have even been a lava planet. If the collision happened fairly late, then maybe it had time to cool down from its formation. It might not even be off the table that Thea had water oceans. Really, nobody knows. Luckily, there has been a lot of research into what early Earth was like before the oceans formed. We know that Thea was a rocky planet like Earth, so it's safe to assume that Thea may have a similar environment to early Earth. Unfortunately, there's very little surviving material from this time period on Earth, but it seems that a magma ocean probably existed. Based on climate models of planets like this with magma oceans, having a CO2-dominated atmosphere similar to Venus seems pretty likely, and potentially one that's dense and pretty cloudy. It also seems that early Earth was probably not airless. This all applies to Thea, as well as Mars and Venus and any other potential rocky planets that may have been forming around this time. So while I'm not saying that Thea was definitely a Venus-like planet, it's a possibility that it may have had some kind of atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide above magma oceans, if what little we know about early Earth is anything to go by. But really, the true answer to what was Thea like is we don't know. Everything I've said in this video is speculation based on simulations, climate models, and extrapolations from what we know about other planets, and nothing here is actually confirmed to be true. Unfortunately, Thea was destroyed a few billion years too early for us to study it, and we will never truly know what it was like. 
but we should be thankful it happened. There's some evidence that the Theia collision delivered water to Earth, allowing us to have oceans. It may have had some influence in starting tectonic activity, something that seems very helpful in preventing the planet from experiencing a runaway greenhouse effect. And of course, the whole creating the moon thing. All information relating to Theia is hypothetical right now, and probably will be for a very long time. But that doesn't mean we can't speculate, and some of that speculation is backed up by real data. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space exploration.